Yes, yes, I've had a haircut. In this video, we are going to immerse ourselves in a school of magic as we examine the complexities that accompany the miracles from the divine. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. So welcome to the second, or is it the third, video focusing on the magic system within Mithras. We're going to um, be examining the, the spells and miracles of the Theseists. Now, first up, an apology. I, it has been commented to me that I have a problem pronouncing the word theist. So please be gentle with me in the comments. I am doing the best I can. Theist, theist, theist. So theists are the clerics of the Mithra system. They obtain their magic from the divine beings associated with the campaign setting. Now it has to be said at this point that due to the adaptability of the system, it means that the school of magic could really be referred to as gaining spells from any entity since this could be anything from a divine being a deity or demigod through to maybe some inter interdimensional being as long as there's some form of worship involved then the spells gained or miracles would be from this school thesis theists sorry have two <laughs> main skills devotion and exhort. Now, according to the core rule book on page 178, devotion reflects the strength and depth of the bond between the theist and his or her deity or deities, while exhort is the ability of the worshipper to correctly call upon or phase his requests so that the divine being actually responds to him or her. With devotion being based on the character's power and charisma and exhort being the result of intelligence and charisma, both are really important and have a significant impact of the, on the power that the theist can actually wield. Now, once the character or player has decided which entity to worship, the character will start with the number of miracles, that's what we call the spells within um, theism. They will start with a number of miracles equal to 1 20th of their devotion skill. Now, while other forms of magic are fueled by magic points, theists have a slightly different mechanic. They are blessed with what is known as the devotion pool, which they use to fuel their miracles from their divine being. Now, the types of miracles and the size of the character's devotion pool is dictated by the rank within their order. Now, orders and brotherhoods are really important for theists, so ensure that you check out my video about using um, orders and brotherhoods, brotherhoods within your campaign. There should be a card up at the top now. There is a table for calculating the character's devotion pool on, in the core rulebook on page 180, but basically this is a fraction of the character's power score depending on which rank they are in their order or brotherhood. Now, while magic points refresh by the method, method specified by your campaign, in our campaigns they we use the normal resting rule so after eight hours of rest the character's magic pool will be refreshed. However, the character's devotion pool needs to be fueled by magic points which are channeled into the pool through an act of worship. So if a character had 17 magic points, they would then, through an act of worship, channel some of this 17 into the devotion pool. Now the devotion pool stays full until depleted. So essentially, a theist has to refresh its magic pool, 
channel some into his devotion pool and then if they require it rest again to f um, fill up their magic points now this act of worship is unique to the order and the campaign but to give you an example Bartleby the theist from our campaign worships Amriel one of the twin moon gods now because of this Bartleby must be in sight of the moon in to ensure that he gives thanks to Amriel in order to refuel his devotion pool if you are interested in playing a theist then make sure you create it through discussion with your GM so that you understand what will be required of you in order to fill up your devotion pool now before we get talking about calling down the power of the divine please consider liking commenting and subscribing to the channel i produce regular videos about mithras as well as some actual play sessions and personal vlogs soon i'm going to be producing some videos about gming called the gibbering gm so why not subscribe and press that bell button in order to get a notification when the next video goes live okay back to the theists and their miracles so as previously mentioned theist spells are called miracles and they are provided to them by the entity which they worship the specific spells that a theist can cast is related to their rank in the order spells such as resurrection are limited to the priests or the high priests of the order well more well simpler spells such as for example heal wound is accessible at the initiative level all spells are described within the core rule book and include the rank at which they can be cast as well as other important information for example range duration and which skill is used to resist the spell in order to cast a miracle the cat player needs to know the actual spell and have sufficient points within their devotion pool the amount of time needed to cast a miracle relates to the rank of the spell whether that be initiate acolyte or priest miracles are of an initiate level take one turn to cast miracles at the acolyte level take two turns to cast and miracles at the priest level takes three turns to cast it has to be remind, re remembered at this point that we are talking about the rank of the spell, not the rank of the actual theist. Miracles have a default magnitude and intensity equal to one tenth of the character's devotion skill value. A theist need not apply the entirety of the miracle's intensity if they wish to limit the effect of their god's magic. Once a theist is ready to cast, they roll their exhort skill, and if the skill roll is successful, then the miracle comes into being. As the usual magic rules, the theist is can elect to take minutes for the miracle and in which case the difficulty level is reduced to easy now within our campaign i often rule that if there is no pressure on casting the spell then i grant an automatic success on the roll for example if the characters are at the end of uh, an adventure and Bartleby is healing up the group then rather than having the player having to continually roll until they're out of devotion pool um, they due to a, a series of pool rolls I just say over a set amount of time this actually happens and is successful there are an excellent range of miracles a theist can cast so don't think they are only limited to healing they have the power to shake the earth by earthquake spells and even to change into beast form like the druids of the wild their power is not to be underestimated at all but before we leave theists there is one more area which i have to include in this video this is not actually in the theist section of the core rule book but it is detailed in the orders and brotherhood section on page 261. 
theists of a highest rank can call the can have the power to call down the raw power of the entity they worship by calling for divine intervention. Now this is very powerful and should not be used without carefully considering or considering the possible outcomes. In addition to this, the theist must also fulfill the following requirements. They must be at rank of a priest or high priest within the order and it can only be done once a month if done at all. The character must have an active devotional pool, i.e. magic points within it, and then the, the high priest or the priest makes a hard devotion roll, um, uh, hard if they're high priest, sorry, and a formidable devotion roll if they're a priest. And success indicates that the god has heard the plea and will respond in a way decided by the game master but keeping in the God's nature and power. Now, the help provided by the God results in the character's devotion skill being reduced by 1d4 plus 1. So yes, you could have burnt out theists who have been calling on divine intervention for much too long. Now, one thing I have to say, if you watch our actual play videos, you might notice that sometimes Bartleby uses his devotion skill as a method of gaining more information from his entity, Amriel. Now, this is not divine intervention. It's more like the idea role of Call of Cthulhu, if you know that game. Um, this is when, um, if the players are stuck, then Bartleby or will use his devotion school to gain some more possible information to help them out. Unfortunately, Amriel likes to talk in riddles and metaphors. So even if the role is successful, the answer often leaves the player just as baffled. I hope this has provided you with some information about the theist of Mithras and maybe even inspired you to create one. In the next video, I have an interview. Wow, yes, an interview. It's going to be with Mr. Pickles, who plays the theist Bartleby in our campaign. So why not subscribe and press that bell button so you get notification when that goes live. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. And do remember, if you would like to further support my work here on this channel, then I do have a Patreon page available. So just click the QR code on the screen now or look at the links in the comments below. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy myth thrusting, everyone. See ya. Bye.